in hacking and pen testing and attack environments, the more information that can be collected provides a better opportunity for attacks and exploits to be used. So I wanted to spend a few minutes with you in this nugget just to talk about the general idea of enumeration. When I think of the word enumeration, I think of the song that goes, with a rebel yell, she said more, more, more. Because that's what the enumeration is all about. We're getting more information that we can use to further compromise the system. And a question might be, hey, what are the devices on the network and the system that can give us additional information? And the answer to that is we could throw a dart. Almost every device in our network has the ability at some level to provide information. Maybe not the cabling itself, unless we're doing eavesdropping, but the hosts, the printers, the access points, the servers, the switches, the routers, the firewalls, all have the potential to give us additional information. For example, on a system or a server, we might want to determine what are the shares involved on that system. What folders and or files are being shared off the different devices? From the router's perspective, what does the routing table look like? And that could be another vector for an attack. If we put a rogue router in there and we have all the traffic go through our rogue router, we're then performing a man in the middle attack and have better access to all the data going through that point in the network. We may have DNS servers, domain name system servers, that have the mappings for names to IP addresses. And that would also be a very valuable jackpot of information to collect, especially if it's an internal DNS server, then we can have the IP addresses associated with multiple devices on the inside. We can get the names of computers, the group information, members of groups, and along with the port scanning and fingerprinting that we've already done, we can also identify what applications and services are running on those systems as well. If a device is running simple network management protocol and it's not secured very well or we can compromise it, SNMP can also provide us a wealth of information about a device, which could be a switch, router, server, or host on the network that we could also leverage. Now, enumeration is traditionally done on the local network itself. So we have some device on the inside because we're probing a lot of devices directly. Now, if the attacker is out here at point X, we can still do the enumeration if we've taken remote control of a device, for example, on the DMZ or internal on the network. And then from that compromised device, do our enumeration to find out more information about the internal network and the resources that it has on it. And there's lots of options for getting information. For example, how tough is it for you or I to get someone's email address? And the answer is if they hand you a business card, poof, you've got their email address. If they're also using that email address as part of their login, that gives the attacker an advantage of knowing potential email addresses or IDs they can use as they try brute force attacks or try to log into the network. Also, if systems are using default passwords, that's a terrible thing to do and it's done all the time. Because default passwords for a system, for example, for a, a router or a switch or another device, if that default password is in use, it's easy for the attacker to look that up. And if they do look it up and use that password and it works, they can compromise that system. Simple network management protocol has been around for many, many years, and the early versions of it were really poor regarding security. And if they're still using SNMP with its defaults and very weak security, we could leverage that to extract additional information from those systems running SNMP. Because of Microsoft's Active Directory, is the big boy on the block for corporate infrastructure. Getting access through an account on an Active Directory system is desired access by the attacker. And a brute force attack is when we try over and over again multiple combinations of possible passwords to get access through a user account. And we'll have more on brute force attacks and dictionary attacks in a later nugget. And the benefit of learning, for example, the groups that are involved in a Windows system and more specifically, the users that are members of those groups that gives us more information on who we might try to attack or compromise as far as user accounts in the system. If we can do a zone transfer and download the entire DNS database from a system, that's fantastic. But even if we can't download the entire database, if we could access the DNS, especially the DNS inside of a local company, that's gonna give us more information on the names to IP address mappings inside that infrastructure. So these are some general techniques for enumeration. And a few other details I'd like to add include NetBIOS, information that we can glean off of the network. Another one that's not listed here is lightweight directory access protocol, as well as network time protocol, which seems pretty innocent, but network time protocol can also give us information on other systems that are associating with an NTP server. Also, if we can significantly disrupt network time, we can also cause some denial of service regarding Active Directory components, as well as digital certificates that are also checking for date and time. 
in this nugget, we looked at three specific things. Number one, the concept of enumeration, of getting more information from a system. Number two, how that might be valuable. And three, some specifics, including LDAP and SNMP and NTP and so forth, that could be ideal targets for doing the enumeration itself. And in the following nuggets, we'll take a look at some specific examples of doing the enumeration using specific tools with specific protocols. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.